No, we got some newer young people that are coming in. Now, some of y'all young, but y'all act old. Y'all talk to me. Some of y'all young and, and can get out there and fellowship, but you act old. Sometimes we need to get, get, get to that place. Amen. You ain't nothing but 20, 21. It's all right to, you know, be 21 and, you know, hang out amongst the saints and fellowship. Amen. And then so you have, not only do we, we, we need to have the ability to minister to one another. And, you know, we have to learn how to bear one another burdens. See, and, and this, is, this is why, this is where, you know, this is how people get close. And I think the church lacks closeness because we don't have no burden bearers. We, we don't have nobody in Laron down. We don't have nobody go over there and talk to him and try to lift him up. We don't have anybody that can go over there. And, and some of y'all just, you know, sometimes you can't even talk to some folks because some of y'all run your mouth too much. And then so you have people that are reluctant to talk to you. They want to help. They want to get in there and do it. You know, do, you want somebody to help you, but then you got so many people that run their mouth too much. Hey, you, heard, you, heard, you heard Monty down there. Uh, you, know, you heard Monty did that down there at the, at the uh, you don't even know where it's at, uh, down there at the place down there. Just, uh, just talking. Some of y'all need to, some of y'all just need to shut up. Because sometimes, you know, when people that talk too much, sometimes they start adding their own flavor to whatever happened. It ain't even, it ain't even happened that way. But they just start adding, adding up. Yeah, because, you know, uh, yeah, he, he, he did say that. And, you know, he said this too. And they, they ain't even say that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what happens is, so now, this, this is, you know, I don't agree with this, and, and this is totally against, you know, the body. There's a lot of uh, hoods out there, and, and what I mean by hoods, they have brotherhoods and sisterhoods, fraternities and sororities. We don't believe in that. We, we, don't, we don't deal with it because they, 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 they reverence other gods. But one thing about those folks, they're tight, and they, don't, they're not, they ain't got no loose lips. They don't be out there telling, you know, because they got to do some stuff. When you join them fraternities and stuff like that, they got to do stuff that, you know, that, 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 that ain't right. <laughs> With that hazing and all that stuff like that. And you can't, and you, you, tell, you tell if you want. Amen. But people want to be a part of it so bad. They said, all right, even if I get beat on my back with this, this, this thing. I remember my cousin uh, was going to that thing. I, said, I, I told him, I said, look, Tim. And I don't think that's a good idea, brother. He said, he said, man, I, you know, I just think it's cool. And then he told me what happened. I said, see, they're not going to make me fly up there and, and knock somebody's head off. And he said, but we, we, I can't, you know, I'm not, I'm not supposed to talk about it, but this is what happened. I'm not supposed to speak about this, but this is what happened. Amen. We had a, one of the pastors, amen, he used to be a part of that too. And, and, <laughs> He first came to the church, he might have an anxiety attack. Some stuff was going on. He, he was over there scratching. He said, well, Pastor, I just don't. I said, son, it's going to be all right. Just, I said, calm down. God, I said, God going to fix it. He kept calling him, but Pastor, it don't look like it's good. Listen, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> God is going to fix it. But listen, when they got in those groups, if stuff happened, their mouth were sealed. If it was a secret, they sealed it. They didn't tell them about it, what the secrets was. But you got folks in the church that are telling people secrets. If I come to you in confidence, if I talk to you in confidence, you don't tell my story. Because I needed you to talk to. And this prohibits or it, it, it doesn't allow people to be open with other people because of you. Come on. Oh, God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know, see, what, 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 we're, what we're supposed to do when, we, when, when, when God or well, God placed you here for me to talk to you about certain things. And if I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. That's why I came to you because I thought 
that you were going to hold it together. I didn't know you were going to tell the city about what happened. I didn't know you was going to put it on the billboard and tell everybody, broadcast it on the radio. Y'all ain't talking. Give me the book of Colossians 3. Now, one of the things that I realize is that people that talk so much, they don't never talk about the good stuff. Oh my, y'all ain't saying nothing. When it comes down to good stuff that I did for you, that ain't the stuff that you spread. You try to spell the negative stuff that you think you heard. Somebody shout hallelujah. Never forget, I met somebody, and they were telling lies on me. They told somebody that I, I rode down to the Florida to have them meet somebody. And I'd never been to Florida with the person. I said, well, how in the world did I get in Florida with you and we ain't never ride to Florida together? Huh? <laughs> I started thinking about that thing. I said, man, something ain't, something ain't, right, with the, you know, something ain't right with this story. Either he must have had a dream <laughs> or, or just lying. Because <laughs> sometimes people just, you know, you know, I learned this about people. When they don't have any, they don't know how to start conversations. So they, they, because they don't know how to start conversations by natural instinct, they just got to talk about something that don't make sense. Or people that's not good with conversational pieces, when people are talking, they just start talking about something totally different. We're talking about basketball. Then you start talking about the stars in the sky. Oh, God, I'm about to get in some trouble here. We, 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 we're, we're talking about, <laughs> y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> we're talking about sneakers, you know, we're talking about shoes. And then you just start talking about speakers. <laughs> you say, well, where, where's the connecting point? Because we, I don't understand how to connect in conversation. And so some people that don't know how to connect in conversation, they just say anything. And you have some people that just lie on people because they don't know how to connect in conversation. You got people that gossip because they don't know how to just have a regular conversation. How come every time we're talking on the phone, you got to be talking about somebody? We can't talk about your day. How has your day been? How's everything been going with your life? What's been, you know, it has to be talking about somebody else because you don't know how to connect in conversation. Can't just be, we just can't have a good conversation about, you know, some investments or talking about how we could build a ministry or how you can build your house, how you can build your family. It's a myriad of conversations that people can have. But because we don't know how to converse, we just start talking about anything. Colossians 3.13. Forbearing one another. Forbearing one another. And forgiving one another. And forgiving one another. Uh -huh. If any man have a quarrel against me, any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. All right. Now, this is the place that I struggle. And this is where it's hard for me to comprehend. Is that a lot of times when it comes down to the body of Christ, the real problem with unifying is unforgiveness. That's what it boils down to. It boils down to you having a problem with somebody else and you not forgiving them for whatever occurred. And then in some cases, you haven't forgiven them what you thought occurred. Wow. <laughs> oh, my. Sometimes you think something happened and it even happened and you hold a grudge against somebody and it never even happened. Ain't even speaking, can't speak, won't talk, won't do this, won't do that because you thought something happened. And 
this, you know, when it comes down to unifying about this, this scripture is very important. It says, if any man have a quarrel against the, uh, any, even as Christ forgave you, do also do, also, uh, so also do ye. So in essence, even if somebody did do something, you still got to have the mind of Christ and say, you know what? I forgive them. Amen. 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 But it's so hard for you to forgive. And you've done worse stuff. Oh, God. And it be the ones that don't want to forgive, the ones that done did worse stuff to people. You don't want to forgive somebody for doing something to you, but you done did some worse stuff. And probably still is doing stuff. But you don't want to forgive. And unforgiveness, it separates the body. This is why when it's time for the body parts coming together to fellowship, if you've ever had a thought in your mind to say, oh, no, I just don't feel like going, you know what it is? It's a people problem. My God. You know, I had a conversation. I've had several conversations with individuals and people that say, hey, pastor, I want to go here and this is who I'm going with and this, that, and third. And I said, well, uh, you ain't going to invite nobody else. Well, I connect with that person better. So then the question is, why do you only connect with one person? Is it a people problem? Or is it a you problem? Why y'all so, is, it, is the microphone working? Yeah. So Laron said, hey, pastor, you know, I'm going out and, um, you know, it's just going to be uh, me and Elisha Bowles, we're going to hang out. And we're going to do something big. We're going to go down there, you know, downtown, just hang out. Say, well. Are you inviting the other brothers at the church? Oh, no, nah, y'all, yeah, no, nah, I, I ain't right now. Well, why? Uh, just, just trying to do something different. There's a hidden agenda. It has to be. Because why would you only just want to invite one person and y'all doing something that everybody can do? So why would you just invite Diego, but you don't invite Draylon? Is it, y'all, can, can y'all hear me clear? You know why? Because there's a problem. There's a relationship problem. It's a unifying problem. There's a forgiving problem. There's a trusting problem. And the list continues to go on problem. So we have all of these problems, so now the body of Christ really can't unify and we really can't move because you don't want to fix that little issue that you got. You don't want to deal with that little issue that you, and, and a lot of times the issue, you, you really don't want to deal with it because it, it, it probably don't even make sense and it probably never happened and you probably don't even know what to talk about because it don't even make sense. Just analyze all the little problems that you ever had with people in church. Just analyze all the little problems and see is it worth not talking to them? And then start to analyze the stuff that you done did. All right, read, read it one more time. Maybe they can hear the scripture. Read, uh-huh. Forbearing one another. Forbearing one another. And forgiving one another. And doing what? Forgiving. Forgiveness is the key to unity. Can I tell you why? Because there's going to be stuff that Sharonda do that you ain't going to like. Y'all all right? I got I to gotta keep y'all active so y'all can hear me. <laughs> Amen. It's going to be some stuff that Joel will do that y'all ain't going to like. It's going to be some stuff that, that, that they're going to do that you're not going to delight. But here it is. I got to make sure that I'm in a mode of forgiveness. Amen. And, and, you know, we have to teach forgiveness again because I think sometimes it slips people's mind. Yeah. <laughs> y'all, amen. Y'all here with me? 
Forgiveness, it'll, it's, it's starting to slip people's mind because people now don't, they, they have a, they struggle with forgiving. Struggle with forgiving, and, and it can be some small issues. I don't know if I can forgive Ron for doing that. It felt like when he was preaching, it almost felt like he said something that we talked about. You know, Minister Frank, it sounded like he throw, was throwing off. It sounded like he may have been talking directly to me. And that probably was just God trying to get to you. And you trying to, trying to talk about somebody that heard, overheard your cry. And he had to, you know, he had to overhear when we was out there talking and God using him. And you just want to have a problem with beef with somebody because you're a little salty about what happened. Lift your hands and say, Lord, help me. 1 Peter chapter 3. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. You know, we're going to have a, a whole lot of folks jumping and shouting, going to hell because they don't know how to forgive. A whole lot of people. I mean, a strong buck. They're going to be bucking good. Bucking and bucking. Shouting and bucking. And all the way to hell because they don't know how to forgive their brother or sister for something that occurred. You know, I, I was thinking about this, and I think I've had a conversation with a couple of people about this. I said, man, if I know I'm going to hell, I, I'm not about to be in here jumping and shouting and running around with everybody, and I ain't about to hurt my knees, and I ain't about to, <laughs> I ain't about to be coming to Sunday school, Sunday morning service, Sunday night, if I know that my intentions isn't good. I'm not even going to waste that seat. It, it doesn't make sense. If I know in my mind that I'm going to be a divisive person, if I know in my mind that I'm not a part of no vision, if I know in my mind and I ain't trying to unify, help grow the ministry, and I just want to be a totally against it, why waste your time? Sometimes we could be holding up a seat for somebody else to come in. Holding up a position. Somebody about to come in. Amen. And let me tell y'all this, even when it comes down to leadership and having position, it's very vital that when we have people that are coming in to be a part of the body and they want to be a part of the ministry and start operating and doing stuff, let me tell you something. This church don't evolve around you. It don't. It don't evolve around you or your ideas or your thoughts. If somebody, if you got somebody new that come in here and say, hey, listen, I think it would be a good idea if you, well, I already got the vision for the ministry. You, listen, I'll tell you something. You'll run somebody away because of that. Amen. And you can stop the ministry. And, and people, you know, people when they come in, nine times out of ten, people don't just want to come in and sit down. They want to do something. And sometimes we shy people away or throw them away because of our little idea and they might be smarter than we are. All right. All right, yeah. They may have better ideas than we have. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Listen, I'm not the smartest person in this church. I might be the teacher of this scripture now. And with this right here, I can help everybody in this church with this. Everybody. I can stand with this. And I don't know too many people that, that handle me with this, but I stand with this. But when it comes down to technology and, and, and certain physics and certain, all that stuff like that, I got people that surround us, you know, administration, I can't do that stuff. Amen. And I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad that I got to call somebody to help me with my schedule. I ain't mad about that. Thank you. Okay. It's hard. It's, it's even hard for me to even keep up with my bills and stuff like that. I got somebody to help me with that. Amen. I, I, got, I got a few of them. <laughs> My mom would say, all right, let's do today. I'd say, all I say is good morning. Okay, go on the pay for it. <laughs> right? So there's a lot of different people that have things that they could bring, and we're hindering the move because we don't want anybody to be smarter than we are. So we try to, we, we try to dismiss their ideas because they, you know in your heart that that idea is better than yours. 
you know, right there, that's why, that's why it burns so much. That's why you're so aggravated about it because you know that, and, and then see, you, you don't even know. See, first of all, it ain't about you in that ministry. It's about God. So you saying that, oh, that's my idea, or, you know, that was my thought, or that was my this, or that was, yeah, oh, yeah, pastor, you know, I did that. But people, I, you know, some of y'all don't know, but I pay attention to that spirit. Amen. So, yeah, pastor, I just want to let you know that I did this. Pastor, I want to let you know that I did this. I did, oh, that was my idea, Pastor. You know, we went outside and was handing out pizza boxes. I, 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 I did it. It's an individualized spirit. And it stops the motion and the movement of God. And then when people start coming in and they start seeing the I, 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 then they, they're reluctant to give their thoughts. And if you know more than me in something, man, I'm, I'm going to, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to use you for what you know. I'm not about to fight. I'm not, listen, I'm not here to fight nobody that knows something more than I know. Say, so thank God. You know, I thank God for people that surround by me that are smarter in different areas that I'm not. Wherever I'm weak at, I got somebody that's strong enough. And y'all know I call y'all if, if I need some help with something or if something going on, I say, hey, you, you know what? Uh, Frankie would probably be a good person to talk to that about. You know what, Mike Boyer, he's probably a good person to talk about that. We got, we got so many different avenues and luck. Uh, Dana was my legal agent for a little while. <laughs> I was calling her, she was bringing stuff to pass. She was just saying, all right, pass, I got to type it up. Come on, let's get, come, come on in there. Hey, pass, you can come pick it up. Or you know what, I'll give it to you. I, girl had, I had so many files stacked up, labeled and everything. I said, whoa, oh, praise God. She had that thing good and organized for me. Because that's the place that I probably would have had them, them, them papers would have looked like this in the book. It'd have been this, the Bible would have been my folder. And these are the papers in there. <laughs> she had everything separated by what it was supposed to be because that's a field that she could do. It's a lot of different things that you all could do and we need to bring those things together because we can't operate by our Selves. In fact, you need to be so productive and in a position of producing, you need to already have somebody in your place. We don't think about that. We try to make sure that they don't know as much. I want to keep them a little, they got to say a little bit under me so I can have a little bit over them. When I used to spend time with these young men at my house, I would teach, I'm teaching them what I know. I want to give y'all what I know. I'm not, I don't want to just halfway this or halfway that because and one of the things I was talking about, I think I was talking about talking to one of the young ministers. I said, there are a lot of churches that are full, but they're only full temporarily because they don't have no sons. And if you don't have any sons, your ministry, it ain't going far. You don't have no seed in it. You, there's no seed to produce it. So it'll carry on for just a good little bit of time, then it'll start dying off because there's nobody else that can put seed out there. Amen. Forbear one another. Oh, got you. give me that first Peter chapter 3 and 8. Uh huh. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Having compassion one of another. All right, be one mind, and then everybody got to have the mind of what? Compassion. Showing compassion. And see, what we must understand is that not only, see, a lot of us want to be shown compassion, but we don't want to display it ourselves. We don't want to. We don't want to have compassion on nobody else, but we want the compassion on us. We want somebody to feel for us and, and, and give us a break, but we don't want to give nobody a break. And then see, what, let, me, let me explain this. Sometimes, you know, somebody could be going through something in their mind and we don't even think about it. Say, you know what? She might be just having a bad day, so I'm, a, I'm not going to hold that to her. You know what? He, he, must, he mustn't have a good day at work because he's, not, he's normally not like that. 
See, we don't think like that. We'd be ready to rile up and say, oh, well, you shouldn't have did that. You shouldn't have said that. And, but we don't have no compassion. Hey, you know what, Ron? How, how was your work today? How was work today? Did you have a, is, is everything all right? We don't want to do that. We don't want to investigate the issue. We just get stuck with what the problem is, and we don't have no compassion. Now, when we go off on somebody, we want to explain why we went off. You want somebody to have compassion on you, say, well, I, I was having a bad day, and my boss, they just fired me. My tire blew out. I, I lost my car. I did this. My dog ran away. All these different things happened. <laughs> you want somebody to show compassion on you. But when somebody else has done something to you, you don't have compassion. You want them to pay, and you want, you want to speak judgment on them. Mm. Oh, God going to judge them. They just, it's the decision. <laughs> Lord gonna judge him. I gotta be careful with that. Because guess what? Let me, let me explain you something to you. If this person is a part of the body of Christ, and you're a part of the body of Christ, and you're telling God to judge them, what you who you think will get judged? You will get judged too if you're a part of the body. Oh God, you, God, you need to do something with them. The, ju the judgment of God is upon them. And you ain't got no power to judge nobody. Ain't got no power to put no judgment on no one. I'm old God going to judge them. Oh, yeah. That, oh. oh, did you hear about that? They lost their glasses. God judging them. Oh, he left his debit card at the house. God judging them. That's people that don't have compassion. That's people that don't show compassion. Why would you want your brother to be judged by God because y'all got into an argument? <laughs> we got into an argument, and the first thing you say, oh, all right, well, the judgment of God going to be on you. Oh, you don't want to agree with me? So iPhone 14 did not come out in May. It came out in June. It came out in June. No, it came out in May. It came out in June. Okay. You know, all right, God going to judge you. That's how y'all laugh, but that's how some of the saints are. <laughs> Trying to cast judgment on somebody based upon an argument. You don't have any compassion. You don't have any love. You ready for God to judge everybody? Oh, the, the judgment on them. Oh, God gonna judge. Oh, they ain't open the door for me. God gonna judge them. Be ye all of one mind, having compassion. So not just the ministers got to have compassion, but the saints got to have compassion too. Yeah. Everybody got to show compassion. It has to be a display. And you know, see, the reason why compassion is so uh, uh, needed, because there's going to be stuff that happened. There's going to be stuff that happened that you don't like, and you're going to have to show the compassion. You're going to have to show that, you know, you know what, let me, let me have a spirit of forgiveness, man. I know she didn't do that intentionally. I couldn't have been. I, I, I know her. She wouldn't have. See, what we like to do is we, we'll let one thing. We'll forget about. Our, this, is, this, is what, uh, this is what gets me. Our, Everybody can see that 99. These are all of the good things that people have done. You'll see, you'll see, you, 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 you'll see that it's been 99 things, but that 99 being that small thing. Now, if somebody do one thing to you or one thing wrong, that's the one. So the one is magnified. And see, what happens is one person's wrong overthrows, overtakes, submerge, emerge, drown the 99. Think about it. Now, this person done picked you up from your job all year long. Now, this one time, they can't because they had something else planned. 
Now, they're not a child of God no more. They're not, they don't love you. They're not a part of the body of Christ anymore. Because of that one time that they could not do something. But you, it, it slipped your mind that they done did it 150 times. I done paid for your food every day this year. And just this one time I said, you know, I, 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 can't, get, I can't get you this time. Then you start looking around and looking confused. <laughs> you telling me that you're getting mad at me because of the one time that I cannot do it for you. Or the one time. You know, folk got mad, got mad at me. I didn't answer your phone call all year. I missed one phone call from you. I pass it and it's just, I just feel like you don't love me. What happened to love, the love? That I was showing you all year when I was there for you all year and I couldn't get you this one time. I couldn't talk to you just this one time because I was busy. Oh God, y'all all right. See, when we have compassion, we don't have that spirit. When you don't have when you're lacking compassion, you will always have that spirit. People don't do, and, and this is one of the lingo, this is this is one of the cliches in the church. Nobody loved me. Nobody is there for me. I said, well, hey, wait a minute. There's been a lot of things that I've seen people do for you. Oh, well, Pastor, I, it was just five of them that did it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't think anybody loved me no more. Or no, not no more, but people don't love me in the church. I said, well, from the last thing I checked, people do show love to you. I don't think nobody loves what, what makes you think that? Well, because such and such did this. So you're telling me because one person did something to you, nobody in the church loved you. <laughs> that's the one to the 99. And that's because we don't have the spirit of compassion. We don't have the spirit of forgiveness. If the church can master forgiveness and compassion, oh, man. This would be a powerful ministry. You know, compassion is so, it's so strong that they, they, they got this, you know, one of the fastest growing churches in, in, this, in this little state is called Compassion. The Compassion Church. And they're growing because they believe in showing that compassion. And if we can get to the place where we stop having all these little problems and issues and schisms and all this little stuff and start displaying compassion, the ministry will grow past where it is and where it can be, it'll go past it. Why? Because of the compassion and the love and the forgiveness that the body has. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm trying to figure out how could this hand aggravate this hand so much. But this hand and this hand need each other. You can't clap them. You can't make no sound without each other. Amen. Each, each of your feet, both of your feet, your feet, foot, one foot, the other foot, your feet need each other. Can't say the foots need each other, but the feet need each other. <laughs> Give me the book of, I'm about to close here. Give me Romans chapter 12. Look at somebody and say, we are going to live. We are going to live. Look at somebody and say, the only way I can live okay. is with you. All right, finish this up before we go to Romans. Finally, be ye all of one mind, have a compassion, one another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be what? Courteous. courteous. So if I'm courteous, and, you know, when they're talking about this pitiful, it's, it's talking about showing pity, if you will. Or, you know, and, and I'm not talking about, you know, somebody having a pity party, but this is almost like showing that, uh, 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 um, affection, if you will, to uh, display that it's all right for you to be down, but I'm going to come. With the scriptures, Romans and.
talk about but one of them always A lot of stand up. What you 